Recording is on. Welcome back to another interview on the channel. I'm not joined by a usual guest being a player. I'm today joined by Mark Milne, the founder of 3030 Tennis. Mark, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, Dan. Very good, thanks. Good stuff. Um, so for any sort of listeners that haven't uh, researched 3030 and aren't familiar with the sort of scoring and the rules, uh, how would you sort of sum up 3030 and explain to a, to a newcomer what it is? Yeah, yeah. 30 30 tennis is a very simple idea. It's an alternative, shorter format to produce tennis matches that don't go on and on for hours, basically. It's a very, very easy um, set of rules. The main rule being that instead of starting a game from love all, every game actually starts from 30 all. So you'll start serving at 30 all. The first point's played, it'll either be 40, 30 or 30, 40. The next point played, it could be game or it could go to juice. And the juice and add points are pay, played out as per traditional tennis. The sets are played out as traditional tennis. The only other slight changes are that if a set does go to six games all, a tie breaks played as per traditional tennis, but rather than the, the seven point match tie break, it's the short set tie break as per appendix five in the ITF rules. It, it could be described as the nine point tie break. It's a best of nine points. The first person to get five points wins the tie break and wins the set seven, six. If that tie break goes to four all, there is a sudden death point. There is no longer the lead by two points in the tie break. It keeps it nice and short and nice and exciting basically. So in a nutshell, the scoring is identical to traditional tennis, except every game starts at 30 all, and there's a nine point tie break at six games all. The other slight changes are not nothing to do with the scoring, but when you're serving, rather than initially changing ends after one game and then after every two games as per traditional tennis, I've doubled that up. I'll, I'll explain in a minute, but you serve the, there are two games played followed by after every four games you change ends. You'll find that when you play games that start at 30 all, there are obviously less points to be played. So the games tick over a lot more quickly. And if you were changing ends after one and two, you end up actually changing ends too frequently. So after a bit of experimenting, we got to the final format where it's after two and every four and that works really really well uh, it also reduces the total number of change events per set mm -hmm. if you get a set that does not go to a tie break you will only have three change events maximum from the maximum of possibly six changes it's, it's by half obviously it halves the number of changes of ends if it goes to a tie break you will have one additional change of ends because in the tie break after the first four points you change ends basically so a tie break set will have four change of ends so it, it makes it all that much shorter it makes your playing time more efficient your, your court times used more efficiently and the last thing if you're playing a story for example a best of three sets match I've decided that because the sets go past a bit quicker player A will serve first in set one you then alternate so that player B will serve first in set two and then player A will serve first again in set three you alternate who starts serving at the start of each set regardless of whether a set ends after an even number of games or an odd number of games. I've always thought that a bit strange. If a set ends in an even number of games, the same person that has served in set one first will serve again first in set two. So the best of five sets match that ends up 6-4, 6-4, 6-4. The same players actually serve first in all three sets. So I just, just because the sets go past a bit quicker, it just gives a better flow to it. It's, it's a fairer system. And yeah, Basically, that's it. it. It's very simple. It still feels, it looks, it sounds like traditional tennis, but a set is estimated or I'm finding will, will be completed in no longer than 20 minutes. So if you play a best of three sets match, it's completed in no longer than an hour, which is ideal when you have a one hour court time booking. And if you do want to play the best of five, a bit elongated, uh, some people may want to do that. It's played in between 60 and 90 minutes. It's a nice length of time. No longer are you having sets that last an hour or matches that last hours. So scoring simple, very, very simple. Yeah, I think from a supporter point of view, I've been to live events in the UK before, and you mentioned the switch events sort of 
can take a long, long time. And when I've been to events before um, in Manchester, and you can't sit in your seats before the change of ends. Um, and sometimes you stand and wait in 10 or 15 minutes to get in your yeah. seat. You can end up yeah. to the set. That, so. That's very true, actually. That's correct. Yeah, these these events. Yeah, no, I, I think it works actually well. It takes a wee bit of getting used to because in the past, in traditional tennis, you're you're changing on the odd games. Mm. But if you're changing after two and four, you change after two games, you change after six games, you change after ten games. So the change of end score is slightly different. You know, typically you could change ends at one all or or two nil. You can change end at three all or a, a set that gets elongated is quite good. You change ends at five all so you've got a remaining two games potentially if someone wins at seven five or if it goes to a tie break you've got the tie break and two games so changing at five all works quite well and it means you're changing ends when you're level as well it doesn't there isn't always someone ahead sometimes when you're changing in so i found it works quite well and, and no one's complaining i i wanted initially two games and then four games because obviously when you're playing outdoors the weather can make quite a difference from one end of the court. When you're indoors, it's not a problem, but outdoors, you can have quite a different change of conditions from one end to the other. At least if you have two games and then four games and then four games onwards, it, it sort of it negative. It, it makes it a bit fairer again, sort of stuff. Rather than starting, let's play the first four games, that could be the good side you're on, and you could be four love up. And, and the set's nearly gone, at least it gives the other player an opportunity to play at least two or four games mm -hmm. at either end, basically. So, yeah, yeah, that's the story there. So just going back to the start, what sort of inspired you at the start, 30-30? Because it seems that a big commitment to sort of start your own format of tennis. Yeah, yeah. Let me explain. This, this is um, a hobby for me. Um, it, it's not my career. I, I, I used to help out a wee bit of coaching. I, I've played tennis since I was a young boy, reasonably competitively when I was younger, latterly really just for fun, basically. So this is really just a hobby for me. And it all started about three years ago in Scotland. The weather's not so good in the winter, and what I always did, I played tennis outdoors for six months, and then I moved indoors during the six months of winter. It made sense. I wasn't keen to play outdoor sport during the winter months in Scotland. And three years ago, I stopped playing the game of squash. I'd had a regular partner for the best part of 15 years, and we'd come to the end of the road and decided to call it a day. So I was looking for something else to do during the winter, and I'd remembered when I was a bit younger, there was a game called short tennis. It was a game that, that was introduced to help youngsters uh, get involved in tennis. It was played indoors, typically on a badminton court over a low net with a sponge ball that didn't bounce very high. And you played actually with a plastic bat in these days. It, it had, it didn't have strings. It was a plastic bat with cutouts in it, basically. So we went, went back to playing that, but then we came across touch tennis which uh, have you have you heard of touch tennis it's beginning yeah. to get quite popular and we we found that yeah they had they reinvented short tennis short tennis was originally for kids although adults did play it and enjoy it and i did but we came across touch tennis we bought a few of the touch tennis balls we realized that they then started playing with uh, strong rackets so we started playing that and it was fantastic fun the the ball was a lot faster it was a denser ball that took top spin you could technically serve and volley and it began to feel like tennis but at that time we were still playing the old short tennis rules where it was a bit like table tennis you had two you, you served for two points then your opponent served for two points and so on and you played to 11 points lead by two but we realized this is daft this game now has moved on it's no longer short tennis it's no longer table tennis scoring why don't we just start playing the traditional scoring tennis this game really does feel like just a miniature version of tennis so we started playing the traditional tennis and as indoors you, you technically usually only book a court for one hour. A badminton court is booked for one hour. Mm -hmm. Regularly, we couldn't finish the best of three sets. If a match went to three sets, even sometimes after two sets, you'd run out and you hadn't got a result at the end of the hour, which began, it was a bit disappointing. You, obviously, after you play against someone, you, you like to have a winner and a loser. So we did a bit of investigation and we came across the fast four format, the alternative mm -hmm. shorter format that was created by Tennis Australia a number of years ago and has now become 
an official ITF sanctioned shorter mm -hmm. scoring format. So we started using that again for a few weeks. That's where you play sets to four games. You play a tie break at three all and you don't play the add points. When it gets to juice in a game, you have a sudden death point and the first point after juice wins the game. So we did that, but we were coming off afterwards you know, for example, a score line of four two one four four three, and so on, and this didn't quite sit right with me. I, I, I was very much a traditionalist, and sets of tennis is to six games. A mm -hmm. tie breaks always occurred at six all. So I, I put my thinking cap on, and there was one evening I just remember during the night I woke up and thought I've got it. I remembered that when I was a junior. During coaching sessions or training sessions, the coaches had started games at 30 all. The, the, the reason being, it was to give you more experience of playing the pressure points, the big points and so on. So I su suggested to my opponent, hey, look, let, let's start trying this. This will possibly shorten it. We'll start games at 30 all. And yeah, after a while, a wee bit experimenting, obviously, with the changing of ends, changing a bit with how you play. Uh, completed the set at six games all. 30-30 was born basically from that situation. We found we were regularly, virtually all the time, completing a best of three sets match in the hour. And you were coming off and the scoreline resembled a traditional scoreline exactly, mm -hmm. including tie breaks. I also decided that in the old days, I think some tournaments still do, in the final set, rather than having a tie break at six all, I like to have the advantage set played where you have to still win by two games. Mm -hmm. it, it ensures that someone has to break serve to yeah. win the set, basically. So in the final set, if it's a three-set match, we decided that there would be no tie break. It would go on until you lead by two. And again, that worked great. I think only maybe twice in about two years did we ever get to something like 12, 10 or something. With this format, the serve does not dominate as much. Mm -hmm. You won't go through as many sets where the service it will go one all, two all, three all, mm -hmm. four all. There are far more opportunities to break serve. You know, the receiver's only got to win one, the first the first point and he's got he's got a break point already or if it goes to juice yeah you're, you're in a, well not quite a 50 50 situation but there are more opportunities to break so i felt that it wasn't too much of a risk to play out the full third set i, I didn't mm -hmm. want the match to go on and on as it has in the past at wimbledon for example for hours I, I am fairly confident that will not happen, even although you have to win by two games in that final set. So it was born from there. The naming of it was also important. I realised that, you know, fast four has been called fast four because of the four rule changes and it's first to four games. I wanted a name for it. And when I looked at 30 all, when you write down 30 all as 30-30, when you read that normally, it reads 30-30. And I was very aware that cricket over the last 10, 15 years had developed a shorter, faster paced, more exciting format called 2020. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's, it's changed, it's turned cricket upside down. And the 2020 is written in, in, in letters, first of all, 20, followed by the 2-0. It, it's a shorter game of cricket where they only have 20 overs each and it only lasts three hours instead of either a whole day or when you have a test match that lasts five days. So I immediately thought, oh, I'm, I could actually take that idea and instead of 2020, I'm going to call this format 3030. Written the same way, the 30 is obviously written in letters and the 30 is in digits. And that then could be described as, say, the younger sibling of 2020 cricket. And yeah, it, it says what it does what it says on the can, basically. I, I'd like to think in the future, if someone hears the format 30 30, they immediately think, oh, yeah, that's the shorter format of tennis mm -hmm. where every game starts at. 30-30 or 30-all, basically. So the, the other slight rule change is when the game starts at 30-all now, rather than calling out the score 30-all, the score is called out 30-30. Now, what that does, that differentiates between the traditional scoring and the 30-30 the scoring. So if someone was walking past or watching it and they hear the, the first point shouted in the game, is 30-30, they would immediately understand that, yeah, this is the 30-30 format that's being played here. Mm -hmm. That's quite important because it, everything else about it, the scoreline, everything sounds 
identical to traditional tennis. So mm -hmm. I, I quite like the idea, yeah, you shout out the score 30-30 at the start of every game to, to just reinforce that this is the shorter format, basically. So, yeah, that's how it was developed. Yeah, three years ago, I, I was looking for a shorter method to play, and it's grown from there. I, after a while, I realised that I had something. I really did think I had something. I was confident it worked. So mm -hmm. it, it's developed from there, from contacting Judy Murray, from then contacting the ITF, getting it in front of the Rules of Tennis Committee at that point three years ago when it was in its infancy, and then continuing on from there, developing a logo, developing a website, and contacting many, many people all over the world just using social media, uh, getting them to, to try the format. And it's, it's, it's taken off very well. A lot of good feedback. Great. So... Obviously, the LTA is sort of trying to get more and more children into tennis, um, whether that be softball tennis or they've sort of started introducing the fast forward tennis uh, format that you just sort of talked about in the junior box leagues. Um, so it shows the LTA are sort of trying to um, introduce a shorter format somewhere. And with the court sort of reopening now across Britain uh, for summer and sort of stuff, is it a good time, you think, for to start getting 30 30 on the map and play around the, the Britain, hopefully? Yeah, I think it's an ideal time. Obviously, with I'm looking at the higher level as well as the, the club level, but shorter formats, a number of sports are looking at shorter formats. People don't appear to have the same time or, you know, you won't sit down and watch a four or five. Even diehard fans won't watch every second of a four or five hour match. It's just too long. Don't get me wrong. These format, the traditional format has to stay. That is the ultimate test and that has to remain. I'm not looking to replace it. I'm just looking to use the 30-30 as an alternative shorter mm -hmm. format. And yes, shorter formats, I'm convinced, can help potentially bring in more youngsters to the sport. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of choice out there for youngsters just now. And it appears that the people who are involved are playing tennis, watching tennis. It's getting, it's rising year on year. You know, there's people quoting that it's, it's in the 50-year-olds now sort of style. On average, it's rising. And it's a bit of a concern. The ITEF have recognised this because they have now included the fast four scoring method into their rules. And yeah, a number of associations like the LTA, Tennis Scotland, they have taken on board the, the fast four format. It's getting used more and more in tournaments and so on. And that really is the one format that's out there at the moment that I argue that my format is more traditional. It respects sets to six games. You're, you're not playing sets to four games. It still has the tie break at six. So, crucially, you still play the juice and the add points. When you're watching a tennis match, the matches that go to juice, add, juice, add, juice, add can sometimes be some of the most exciting games that you'll watch. In fast forward, they use the no ad rule so mm -hmm. that there is the sudden death and it can sometimes be a bit of an anti-climax. It's been used in the ATP and WTA doubles for a number of years and I knew, I certainly know initially there was quite a lot of opposition to it because it, it just involves a wee bit more of luck. So back to, I, I applied to the ITF and it was discussed. They knocked me back because they already had the fast four rules in Appendix 5, it's the alternative scoring methods, and yeah, typically it's the shorter methods. So that's why I was knocked back. I then discussed and argued with them that, yeah, I think 30-30 is potentially better because it retains the traditions. It also brings something new to the table, and it's faster paced. The, the sets to four games with no ads, it's it's almost just a set of tennis cut short. There yeah. is no change in pace. You'll find when you, you use 30-30 tennis, play 30-30 tennis, the game score ticks over so much more quickly. There's more movement. It's it's far more dynamic, basically. So it brings something new to the table. So I, that's when I then told the ITF, OK, it's early days. I, I haven't got anyone really to use it apart from myself at the moment. I'll go away and get people to try it. And my plan is to reapply 
and based on the feedback and the trialing that I've been doing, is to hopefully maybe get them to trial it. The, the ITF have an option that if someone comes up with a, a, a reasonable idea, they can take it on board and use it and try it. It's a few small events so that then a report can be compiled and then they, they look at it. So that's my goal. But obviously with what's happened at the moment with the COVID virus and so on, the tours are now on hold or suspended for the foreseeable future. So there are far more opportunities for innovation at the moment. Mm -hmm. That was my problem. 3030 30 wasn't a sanctioned format. So getting mm -hmm. to getting people to try it in earnest was very, very difficult. It was only people at local clubs and so on that are trying mm -hmm. it unofficially. At the moment, there are a lot of domestic events all over the world popping up. And if, if you look at them closely, Quite a lot of them, because they're playing over a short play, playing the tournament or the event over a short duration. Duration, a lot of them are using shorter formats. They mm. are using the fast four because they're looking for round robin events where a player will turn up and potentially play two, maybe even three matches a day. If you were using traditional scoring, that would not be yeah. fair. It would not be possible. So they are using shorter formats. There's the odd one that's using the the match tie break to ten points. Points. That's mm -hmm. the other one. Tiebreak Tens, which is the brand, they've had a number of events that they've got a number of top players to play over the last five years in some of the big cities. And it's a one evening only. They invite eight men and they play a knockout event where seven matches are played. But each match is actually just one tie break to 10 points so I've seen events also popping up like that where they will play a match tie break again my argument with the match tie break is it's too quick mm -hmm. a match tie break if you analyse it is, is over in an, on average 10 minutes it's mm -hmm. a very very quick shootout and as soon as one team gets more than a few points ahead it tends to be one way traffic I know you can sometimes come back but more often than not it tends to be one way traffic so my argument against for her, the, the tie break tense format it's too quick yeah. a match of 10 minutes gives neither a singles player or a doubles team the chance to really get in at least with a set of 30-30 even if you're just playing a match say over one set, you've still got a chance to get in and you can still come back reasonably as well because with the game starting at 30 all you've only got to win four points in a row to win two games sort of style so that, that, that's where I argue that I'm looking for people to try and pick up on potentially using the format at the moment in an event where yeah, they're looking to use round robin, maybe followed by a semi-final, like like the ATP event, the, the, the women's event that they're planning down in um, down south, uh, mm -hmm. imminently where Barry Fulcher is organising it. It's being organised on the same format as the ATP. There'll be two groups of four. There'll then be four uh, qualify for a semi-final and then be at a final. That could easily be played over... A, a maximum of two days with playing the round robin matches plus the semi plus the final using a shorter format. I, I'm not sure what format they're using, but they will not be using traditional tennis. But the 30 30 idea gives an ideal opportunity to, to give it a shot. Let's see how it goes. Let, let's learn some more about it, um, really. So, yeah, it's it's if, every cloud has a bit of a silver lining. I, I always think it's, it's possibly given me an opportunity to get it tried before it gets officially tried by the ITF if, if they agree to accept to do that, which potentially could be a year, two years away by the time I've got enough unofficial trialing done to build my case to go to them. So yeah, it's it's ideal. The shorter formats uh, bring a new dimension. If, if eventually crowds get back to appear and watch these, rather than watch one or two elongated matches where you'll only see four players playing, mm -hmm. you'll potentially see three or four matches. You will see eight mm -hmm. players playing in the same time frame, and it'll still be a decent match, whether it's best of three or best of five. It's still long enough to, to give a decent test of skill. The, mm -hmm. the better player will still win over mm -hmm. best of three sets, and 
over five sets, yeah, possibly even better chance. Unlike where you play match tiebreak to ten points, it's it's hit and miss there sort of style. So yeah, I think it could be an ideal opportunity. And yeah, back at clubs as well, I've been seeing just in the local leagues, they've been reducing the length of a match. The, the days when you turned up for a match during the week and you played from six thirty, ten ten thirty at night, three full rounds of full sets of tennis. There are fewer and fewer people willing to do that now, and everyone that's doing it is getting older, so it's becoming a physical problem as well. You can now shorten a match significantly by using this shorter 30-30 format, and as I say, you come off and you still feel like you've finished a, a proper match. The scoreline is identical, and it's moved along much more quickly. It's, it's, it's better. Yeah, I definitely agree with you in the fact that uh... The 10 matches side and tiebreakers, I'm not a fan of it either because I've watched matches in the past where you sort of, you might have two sets of tennis that might take two hours and then the deciding match tiebreak, a team can be four and up inside two minutes and the, the two hours you've just watched for is that a waste of time. Absolutely. I've done a quite a bit of analysis on that um, and yeah, you're exactly right. You can draw a graph of how long the first set took, how long the second set took, even the number of points and then you get to the third set and it's it's a fraction of the height of the bar that was created. It's, it's all wrong and I know there was a lot of opposition to it when it first became used and yeah, I, 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 my other idea for the 30 30 is that if you do want to play a shorter third set, you could play the first two sets as normal, traditional mm -hmm. tennis scoring, uh, tie break at six all. But instead of using the match tie break as the third set match decider, you could play an advantage set of 30 30 tennis. Yeah. So all that would change is you would just start every game at 30 all, the change of ends would become two and four. And you would have to lead by two games. And mm -hmm. it would, the set still builds the same. You've still got hold of serve. The game score goes one love, two love, two one, three one, rather than the match tiebreak. So an advantage set can actually replace the third set match tiebreak. And it, on average, it lasts twice as long as the match tiebreak. So it's giving you a better chance. It's shorter than a traditional set. So it's still achieving the same goal, but it's fairer, I believe. So I've, I've also thought that could be used because I know I've spoken to a number of people and they, they do not like the third set being over so quickly. It's a shootout. You you get a bit of luck or whatever. And yeah, you, you run, the game runs away. And so you, you've slogged, your, you're right, for two hours and then it's gone. It, it seems gone, yeah. drastically unfair and I want any format out there to be as fair as possible. It has to be a good test of skill, a good test of ability and so on, really. And I think the shorter formats can help produce more champions. At the moment, the, the longer format, like the Grand Slams, the, there are only really a number of people that are capable of winning them, you know, seven matches over a fortnight, best of five mm -hmm. sets. There are many, many other very, very talented players out there but because mm -hmm. they don't quite have the same stamina or, or whatever, the, the experience of playing long matches for that length of time, they, they are left behind. I would like, the, like to think that there could be a shorter, an alternative shorter format that ran alongside that, that opened up opportunities to, you know, they speak about Nick Kyrgios being a fantastically talented player. He he could potentially be a fantastic short format player mm -hmm. and become a global superstar at that level, you know, at that it's just a reduced level. It's a, it's a it's an alternative shorter format, which can only be good. The the more top people out there in, in the, the light uh is can only be good for the sport really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you sort of mentioned before that cricket's been transformed over the past 20 years through the introduction of sort of 2020 cricket at first. And now I know they're sort of introducing T10 leagues as well now, across yes, the world, exactly. um, which are quite big. And as you say, the shorter, more entertaining formats that have attracted a sort of new, younger audience. Um, do you think 30-30 tennis could have the same impact on tennis as, it has, as T20 and T10 leagues have had on cricket? 
yeah, my dream is that there's no reason why it can't. You know, mm -hmm. the, the cricket shorter format is incredible. The the money, the, the number of people attending the matches, it's it's become a family orientated thing. The it's transmitted all over the world. People love watching it because yeah, you, you'll sit down or you'll appear there and it's over in two or three hours. The action's faster, it's more exciting. It's a different format. The traditionalist cricket people hate it. They, they, this this is not cricket. But you, you need an alternative. Everyone has different tastes. And yeah, I, I see no reason why a shorter format of tennis that still respects the traditions of tennis cannot mm -hmm. really, it can work, to be honest. Really, I, um, that's my dream. I'm, my dream is to see it played alongside 2020 cricket. We, we have 2020 cricket, but we also have 3030 30 tennis. And the abbreviations are the same as well. The, the 2020 is obviously abbreviated quite significantly to T20, the 30-30 tennis, once it becomes more known, can be abbreviated to T30 as well. So mm. it's just it's just all very simple. And yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a great fan that I think shorter formats could possibly be the future, basically. Many, many sports, you know, there's not many sports that are not experimenting with trying to produce shorter bite size um bits of play you know I, i've played racket sports all my life and every single one of them have changed the scoring format from when i was younger the game mm. of squash used to be best of five games and you had to be serving to win a game to win a point and you played a game with the nine points they've changed it now to point for point scoring the game scores now a lot less the, the matches don't last as long and it's been a fantastic success for score badminton did the same they used to you had to be serving to win a point the games went to 15 points or 21 points sometimes they've now shortened it they've made every point count now you you could win a point while you're serving or not. Uh, table tennis has significantly changed. Used to be best of three games to 21. A, a game just lasted too long. They've now reduced the game to 11 points and sometimes play the best of even seven games. It's shorter, sharper stuff. So every sport, if, if you stand still for too long, you can die. And, and unfortunately, just reading between the lines and seeing what's going on, tennis does have to try something new, to be honest. And fair, fair dues, the, the IT have recognised this. ITF mm -hmm. have recognised this. They, they've said, yeah, let's bring in fast forward. Let's do sets to four games. But my argument against that is that this 30-30 just brings something new to the table and it still respects everything. I don't want to see in the future someone winning a tournament by 4-1, 4-2 in the final. Mm -hmm. I still want to see a scoreline that looks very similar or looks identical to a traditional scoring. But yeah, you've been starting games at 30 all. So yeah, no reason at all why the 30-30 the tennis couldn't do what 2020 has done or is doing. The, the 2020 are applying to be part of the Olympics Either mm -hmm. in 2028 or 2032, it's in Los Angeles in 2028. There's maybe less chance to be be accepted for that because mm -hmm. in America it'll be baseball or so on. Oh, but yeah. in 2032, there's a reasonable chance it'll be in India. Now, for them not to have 2020 cricket in India, yeah. the Olympics would be a no-brainer sort of style. Mm -hmm. So before the version of 2020... That was impossible. Cricket would not have even been looked at. A game that a whole game that lasted a whole day or lasted even five days, you that would not be considered. It's not exciting enough for the Olympic movement. But yeah, with the format 2020, it's opened up a whole new ballpark. There, there are a lot of players making a lot of money all over the world playing the 2020 cricket, really. And and that would be great for tennis. Mm -hmm. the, the, you read so much online at the moment that the, the players outside the top 100 are, are not scraping a living together. That, that's a tragedy for a sport like tennis. It, it's a massive global sport and only the top 100 are managing to make a, a living sort of style. If you could open it up with a shorter format, tournaments could be played over a shorter time frame so their travel okay their traveling would be similar but the living over costs and so on would be so much less it just opens up a lot more opportunities the, the format could be round robin so every player's getting three matches minimum rather than going along and getting knocked out in the first round it just opens up so many more opportunities and my, my belief is that the television will love it as well it's always been the big gripe of television is that a tennis match at the moment, it's its a bit uncertain on how long it will take, but mm -hmm. it will take a while. 
Mm-hmm. With this format, you're guaranteed that a set is over in 20 minutes, a best of three in an hour. You you will get a bit of variation, like like all things, but on average, and for set, for people who are setting television schedules and so on, they, they would jump at the opportunity of saying, right, yeah, there's going to be three matches on between 7 o'clock and 9 o'clock, or nine, 7 o'clock and 10 o'clock tonight. There you go, watch them. And people will sit down and watch two people mm-hmm. slug it off for for an hour really it's i think it's ideal it, it opens so many more opportunities yeah i think cricket's a perfect example because i've gone to durham cricket matches for a long long time and yeah when you go to the sort of test matches that last five days you go and there might be literally 50 60 people sitting watching you know the old traditional hardcore cricket fans and then that's right if you go to a t20 blast game you know it's pretty much a full house there's fireworks yeah. going off loads of that, kids that about. Fear. yeah that that's and what it, you need it encourages yeah. the kids to play the game to watch the game exactly i think a lot of county county um clubs in sort of england would have gone bust if it wasn't for the introduction of t20 uh, cricket because yeah People just sort of don't go to test matches yeah, anymore. No, the, the traditional people are basically the, the older generation. Mm-hmm. Now they they are not the future for that sport. So they, they uh, you have to get the youngsters in. And yeah, I've never been to a T Twenty, but I've watched a bit on the television. And yeah, it's great to see them thrashing out. And that I, I come from the days when Jeffrey Boycott and all these guys played in the Ashes, and you, you would watch them just padding a ball down for six hours and scoring 10 runs. There was no excitement in that at all to, to the general punt. And if you were a traditionalist, you would say, oh, fantastic, that's brilliant. But the excitement's not there. You're not going to grab people's attention like kids with a format like that. And yeah, 2020, thrashing the ball about, hundreds of runs scored in, in literally hours sort of style and lots of wickets falling and great catches and so on. It's it's a different game and, and I love it. I love it. The, the the tennis the thirty thirty will still produce good tennis. I I can't see it being a significantly different animal from traditional tennis. It'll just take away maybe the the physical side a bit more. It'll level the playing field a bit more on the physical side. It won't be the super super or the the fitter guy. It'll give the guy who's very talented but maybe not quite as fit a better chance. I feel it's it's mm. leveling the playing field to be honest. Yeah, so you're sort of touching this before, um, and I know you've talked about athletics sort of being compared to tennis having lots of different champions. You know, if you if you go through the sort of track and field and the 10,000 metres have sort of got Mo Farah, um, 800 metres have got Rhodesia, the Kenyan, and the 100 metres, obviously Usain Bolt, and they've all become global stars within one sport almost. Um, and you also made a good point before about the Grand Slam. You sort of, Djokovic and Nadal have sort of dominated over that Grand Slam distance, um, obviously seven seven five set matches across the two weeks and there's always a big sort of debate of when the next gen are going to come through you know the youngsters and you argue at the end of grand slams is Djokovic a much better player than them or is he just a lot fitter and is he sort of more experienced in them situations so uh do you think that would be sort of a, a good idea and a, another benefit of 30 30 tennis that you could have more global stars from tennis within within one sport. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's something I started thinking about just literally just about a month ago. Someone mentioned something about various sports have multiple disciplines within their sport, mm-hmm. and athletics. You're right. is a is a, a fantastic example. Within the track events, they have what you call long distance events, which are the events that are like the ten thousand meters or the five thousand meters. These events take say between just roughly 15 minutes to 30 minutes quite a long race you then have next down the the middle distance races which are typically the 1500 or the the mile as it used to be and the 800 meter races these races take between say 800 meters a minute and a half and say three three and a half to four minutes for the mile basically so that's your middle distance and they also have obviously the sprint events the Mm -hmm. 100 meters the 200 meters these events are lasting between 10 seconds and 20 seconds so you've got a wide variety of disciplines within the same sport of athletics and they obviously attract different types of athletes. A sprinter is not going to be running a 10,000 metre 
race. Mm. A 10,000 metre runner is not going to be running a, a 100 metre race. You'll sometimes get a wee bit of overlap maybe between the middle distance and the, the long distance. But in, mm. on the whole, over the years, there's been a set number of superstars, sprinters, superstar middle distance, like you, you mentioned, Rhodesia, and also, yeah, Mo Farah, 10,000, fantastic. Now, that's great for the sport of athletics because they have three global superstars constantly over the last 40, 50 years. You, you'd be able to research and, and find out that there's lots of them. And everyone has their own favourite. Some people like to sit and watch the 10,000 metres or even the marathon, for example, which goes on for hours. But some people will hate that and they'd maybe prefer to watch the middle distance, you know, the four lap or the two lap races. And you will get the people that like the sprints. And what has looked like it's probably the most favourite is people like the sprints. The, you know, it's the, the 10 second excitement, the build up to the race, it's over, you have a winner immediately, similarly with the 200 metres. So you have the three different distances there. There's no reason why tennis can't do something similar. An analogy would be the, the Grand Slam best of five, that's yeah. your long distance. You know, match can last between two, three, four, even five hours sort of stuff. A lot of people like that. They're quite happy to sit and watch that. You can have the middle distance where you play your best of three sets. The the match lasts two hours maximum. Well, I could go on longer. You know, the, the matches are lasting quite significantly. But it's, it's less than, obviously, a Grand Slam match. And with a shorter format, my dream 30-30 tennis, you can have the, the sprint event. Mm -hmm. So you can either play a best of three sets match in an hour or if you wanted a wee bit longer you could play a best of five sets in an hour and a half or even if you were using round robin and you were wanting to fit in as many matches as possible a match could technically be one set a tie break set taking 20 25 minutes and so on during the round robin i would prefer if you then went to the qualifiers from a round robin getting into a semi-final or a final, I would probably prefer the, the format to go maybe up to best of three sets just to elongate it a bit more. Um, but yeah, that's that's your sprints, your middle distance and your long distance. And it, would, it could potentially produce different superstars for these three disciplines as athletics does. So yeah, it's just something that came to me. Somebody would mentioned athletics a few months ago and I thought, oh yeah, well, tennis does have a bit of a long distance. It's It does have a middle distance, but yeah, it doesn't have a short distance at the moment. It, it could be very exciting. It would bring something new to the table. As, as I say, Nick, Nick Kyrgios may prove to be unbeatable at short formats, or, or a certain player could dominate the short formats. It, it would be fantastic. And especially for the youngsters, I think the, 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 the top three or four at the moment, they've been around for a long time and have been fantastic for the sport. But we, we need... Well, everyone realises we need some new blood in there that the youngsters can just feel a bit closer to sort of stuff. These guys are all mid-30s and, and on and so on. Uh, I think youngsters need to see people that are potentially not that much older, you know, the inter in the, even late teens, early 20s, these these ages could possibly, the shorter format could potentially help them because they haven't built up the stamina required to last best of five sets matches. So there's an opportunity for younger people to come through and shine and earn some money, earn some money. That's what it's all about. I, I, I'd love to see them these talented players putting shifts in day in, day out and that and, and struggling to pay their costs and so on. It's There's no other career that anyone would put the effort these guys are putting in and scraping a living and relying on parents funding them and relying on funding from LTAs and that. It's, it's a shame the, 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 the global of tennis, surely there's, there's a potential to make a lot more money through television sales and, and advertising all that it needs to it needs something new to the, to be brought to the table i think right so just the last couple of questions mark uh what are the sort of next steps with 30 30 tennis um i know you've said you've tried to have a trial in the itf before is you're going to sort of go back to that with with new ideas and hopefully get trialed in a in an itf tournament yeah th that is the ultimate goal basically yeah but before the covid kicked in the plan going forward was, was continue to contact people ask people to try using it send me feedback and and i still realize i, I need a, a a bit more really i i've started um um 
choosing ambassadors for 3030 tennis that are people who have tried it but that are now willing well and they've tried it and they've liked it and are now willing to take it forward to try and organize some sort of a semi-official event you know a, a tournament whether it's played over a day or half a day or even two days sort of stuff to just get a bit more feedback and a bit more real feedback in terms of tournament and yeah just a, a varying standard of player playing it you know from older people down to young kids to the reasonably good juniors and so on so that that was the plan and still is the plan to continue on with that getting more trialing getting more feedback and go back to the itf apply officially i've been keeping them up to speed i have contacts at the itf that i'm letting them them know not monthly but regularly on how things are going and um keeping them up to speed really on, on what I'm planning. And yeah, it would be great if they could take a look of it and say, yeah, okay, we do have a shorter format out there. But yeah, it's worth a try. Maybe this guy's been trying this. It looks like it's been mm -hmm. going not too badly. Let, let's give it a go. But with now the tours being suspended, and we spoke about it earlier on, the, mm -hmm. the, there are certainly more opportunities now for people to take on board the idea and potentially try it um mm -hmm. a, a, a reasonable event you know mm -hmm. it, 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 the official sanctioned scoring does not have to be used for mm -hmm. a lot of these events because you know they're not counting towards any ranking points and so mm -hmm. on so there, there are opportunities and i'm i'm trying to speak to as many people as i know to just let them know that it would be great if you could take on board and you know if you're organizing an event would you consider trying this just to just to give it a try you've got nothing to lose sort of style mm -hmm. i'm also in quite deep discussions with some people that you know are, are really keen to take this quite far they they see there is an opportunity with this, basically. It's, uh, as I said, a lot of other sports are doing it. 2020 has done it. And the, the, the future, you've got to keep looking ahead. And yep. uh, there are people that are keen to, to, to really get close to me and, and help me help me work on actually getting it out there, live streaming of it and so on, just to, to try and get to build it, really. Yeah. So, no, it's it's. Uh, I, I thought this shutdown of tennis was going to be a bad thing because I wouldn't get the same opportunity of people trying it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's opened up doors that I think there's an opportunity now for people to try it in earnest at some events, basically, just to yeah. see how everyone enjoys it. The people involved, whether they're watching it, the players, what do they feel? You know, They're going to get more matches in a day. How, how, how does it go? What, did they feel... Uh, you know, the, the, there's a bit of opposition to fast forward. I know it's got its supporters, but there are a number of people that they, they're not happy about having to play sets to four games. So this is just an alternative, another option, but mm -hmm. it, it is different. It's faster paced. It's faster paced. Yeah, so yeah, they're going forward. Yeah, definitely get to the ITF in one year, two year. The, the rules of tennis committee meeting meet twice a year. So it'll all be dependent on what sort of trialing i can get done personally by mm -hmm. people all over the world but i'm hoping these ambassador people that i've taken on board will will be able to delve in more and, and potentially organize reasonable events you know i'm, I'm willing to uh, give them money for trophies you know for kids kids love competing yeah. and if you could play an event out in half a day or a day fantastic you know yeah and, and they're playing multiple games they're not just turning up and getting knocked out in the first round and disappearing and learning nothing everyone will turn up they'll play a minimum number of matches it'll help everyone they, they get the opportunity to play multiple players in the same day you you learn by playing you, you learn by competing tennis is a sport someone has to win someone has to lose we, we're not seeing enough of that at the moment in tennis my uh, I, I keep going back to my local club I see lots of kids turning up for coaching, but throughout the rest of the week, you will not see them playing their mate a set of tennis or a match of tennis. They, you ask them, do you play tennis? Yeah, I go along to the club twice a week for coaching. That That is no good because they'll get to a certain age and they, they won't play again. That's the reason I'm still competing and playing a bit of tennis because I love going along and playing a best of three sets match in an hour and someone mm -hmm. wins, someone loses and, and that yeah. that's life basically. Mm -hmm. And Competing, it's competing is the reason you keep going, uh, yeah. really. So no, I I want to see more sets of tennis. That, that's one of the goals to see more sets of tennis being played by kids out with coaching hours. 
Mm-hmm. You know, you you could potentially get some sort of box leagues going and that, but kids, I don't know what it is. Kids just don't they don't compete the same as they they used to. When I when I was younger, I would go along and play the same guy ten sets in a day, mm-hmm. and it didn't matter who won or lose or that. But you, you learn something from that, and we, yeah. we need to see more of that in all sports. Mm-hmm. Sport is comp- about competing. You've got to learn to lose. You've got to learn to win, and mm-hmm. it, it teaches you. And tennis is fantastic, and it teaches you so many things. And mm-hmm. it's not just the game of tennis. You get a lot of values from having played tennis. You meet a lot of people, and yeah, just basic things like honesty and good line calling, and just just being fair. Just being fair. Mm-hmm. No, so yeah, that that's one of my goals. Let's let's see a bit more sets of tennis being played, and yeah, they're friendly sets. They're not sets to get recorded or anything. Just just mm-hmm. say your next door neighbour, right? We're going round to play the best of three sets in an hour. Let's go, and you've done it. Nothing's recorded. No one knows anything about it. But you've played three sets, and I think everyone gains from that. The the courts will be busier. The mm-hmm. the kids will learn more from it, and and there's I think there's more chance of retaining them. There's, mm-hmm. ch- there's more chances of them then actually getting involved in teams and you know just playing for life. Playing, playing a set. It doesn't matter if you win or lose, but you played a set of tennis, it's great fun. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I know 3030 Tennis has its own website and social media, so I'll link all them in the description um, if anyone wants to follow them. And just sort of for the people watching at home, how can we sort of help you grow it as well? Yeah, I'm, I'm really just looking for people to try it and send me feedback. Let, let me know if, whether you like it. Is, is there anything that can be improved or, or, or otherwise, you know, I, I'm open to any suggestions. The, mm-hmm. the more people that get out there and try it, the more I learn as well. Because, yeah. you know, basically I've, I've been using it myself for three years and now, okay, a number of people have been using it all over the world, but I, I need more people. And, and most people, there's very few people come back and said, we've tried it and we didn't like it. It's, mm-hmm. it, it I, 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 it works. I, I really do think it works, and uh, I don't think I would go back now. <laughs> it's it's a yeah. strange thing. Okay, I don't play tournaments or anything these days. It's mm-hmm. just for fun and exercise. But it's it's a fantastic hour. The best of three. You book your court, and you get a, a, a three set match played. So yeah, if if people are interested. It's simple. The rules are all online. You can download a whole number of basic things. If you were interested to take it a wee bit further and try organising a small junior tournament or a, a team match where you're using this big smash, fantastic. But yeah, I'm really just looking for people to try it. Send me feedback, please. That, that's it in a nutshell. Simple, simple. Perfect. Thanks a lot for your time, Mark. I uh, sort of thoroughly enjoyed it. I think we've put the tennis world to rights. Um, <laughs> yeah, just sort of good luck with everything. Um, and thanks for joining me on the channel. No, fantastic, Dan. I appreciate your time as well. Thanks very much for that. Speak to you again soon. I'll leave all your social medias and the link to your website uh, in the description below for uh, people that want to follow it. But yeah, in the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.